that kills very quickly, obviously. Yes. And it, doesn't, it tries not to interact with its opponent very much. And here's a deck it can't speaking, <laughs> speaking of not interacting yeah. with your opponent, <laughs> Adam Prozac <laughs> is playing Anth, which I think we all know has been doing really well in the Open Series. Yes. And Adam Prozac is a very good player with, he's, uh, you know, pretty much an, a master, I would say. Yeah, he's, he's basically figured this deck out. Between, you know, playing at the last Invitational, making top eight with it there, um, He's played it a ton online when he streams mm -hmm. um, with a lot of foros and daily events. Wrote, he's written a couple articles about it, and people have actually just been playing his deck list card for card. I know that Grant Wilkinson, when he did win in Kansas City, uh, just played his 75 and talked about it in his winter interview. Just how much he's like, Prozac list is fantastic. Yeah. does everything I want to be doing right now. And now we're going to be underway here. So you're going to see Adam Prozac start off with like a taxi and probe. We're going to see a Nettle Sentinel, an Elvish Visionary, Green Sun Zenith, Wirewood Symbiote, Guy's Cradle, another Nettle Sentinel, and a Verdant Catacomb. So this is a pretty good hand, except for not having a uh, Glimpse in an here. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a solid hand against any deck that can't kill you on turn zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for those of you unfamiliar with what Ant can actually do, or maybe new to Legacy, uh, Ant is basically a deck that uses a lot of cantrips and ritual effects to generate uh, this this mass effect the spells to fuel a lethal Tendrils of Agony, which yeah. is a storm card that can do uh, makes the opponent lose two life, and you gain two life, and as the storm ability, which, you know, gets cast for every spell you cast this turn. Yeah. So, um, very powerful deck. Has cards like Infernal Tutor, which can keep fueling the combo. Uh, so, can win very quickly, if, especially if it's not disrupted, which Caleb really can't do. Caleb's deck is a similar combo deck where it just doesn't disrupt his opponent, it just tries to win as fast as possible, but it's a little slower than Ant. Yeah, it's more, it's more resilient. More resilient, you know, It's more yeah. durable, yes. Um, but it can, you know, it can fight through disruption a bit better, but it is nowhere near as fast as Ant is. Prozac definitely has the speed advantage here. As you do see Preordain, he's going to put a Preordain on the bottom. He's going to take a Cabal Ritual and pass the turn back. This is a deck, again, that can kill on turn one. It, it can kill very easily on turn two and frequently kills on turn three. Yeah. Yeah, turn three is pretty much the, the uh, standard Goldfish turn. Yeah. Um, does have the ability to win on turn one or turn two. But again, turn three is the, the standard goal for draw. And with Caleb not being able to really unlikely be able to kill on turn two, especially with this draw. Yeah. I mean, his deck is capable of that. Absolutely. Uh, but in general, you know, it's a similar turn three, turn four kind of goldfish yeah. deck. And being on the draw in this matchup in particular, kind of a little behind right now. Yeah, so we do see a Nettle Sentinel here from him. Adam is going to draw a card. He draws a Lion's Eye Diamond. We do see a Lotus Petal in his hand as well. You see him bringing forward a Ponder. Might need to manipulate a little bit more uh, to get set up for next turn. Uh, yeah, I think, I, but he's, he's in pretty good position right now because he does have the Infernal Tutor and enough ritual effects to sort of fuel a, uh, the, to cast an Infernal Tutor and uh, search for an Ad Nauseam yep. and then cast the Ad Nauseam. Yep. So it looks like he has enough ritual effects there to get going. So you're going to see him play a Ponder. He's playing Lion's Eye Diamond. So here we go. It's All time right, so we're to going do some for counting. It. Lotus Petal is going to come into play. Storm up to three. We're going to see a Dark Ritual here off the Gemstone Mine. As Caleb's going to take a look at that, we're going to bring it up for you guys. It's it my a... favorite art, Dark Ritual. Uh, oh, the is Urza it? Saga. Oh, yes. okay. That's a little fun fact. All of them, all of them add three black mana. Yeah, but it's a very good picture. It is a dark ritual. Oh, okay. And it is a, you're, it's a picture of an altar with someone clearly dying on it. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see if we can bring up that Urza Saga dark ritual for our, but for our friends right. at home. <laughs> Gemstone Mine, happy. though, again, uh, a land that taps for any color of mana with no painful drawback, like losing life, but you lose a counter. You only have you only have three activations of it. Sure. But again, with a deck like Ant, you're not going to be using it very much. Sure. You know? So, and there's that dark... Look at it. There's even a vial of blood pouring out of it. What a uh, great yes. artwork. Yes. <laughs> back, when, <laughs> back, when, back when magic was very dark. There's some very dark artwork back in our early days. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what's going on over here with uh, maybe a bit of a judge's call on the, on the gemstone mine. Not quite sure what's going on. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll figure it out momentarily. But we're, we see Adam going off here. You see a storm count with the ponders one. Lion's Eye Diamonds two. Lotus Petals three. Dark Ritual is going to be number four. You see the other Dark Ritual in his hand, Cabal Ritual, Infernal Tutor. It looks like he's just going to go for the kill right now. Yeah, it looks they, like he just has the kill. Because, again, this is a Storm deck, so if you're going to start casting spells like Lion's Eye Diamond and Lotus Petal, it means you're going for it. Yes. Because you, you can cast those spells at any time. So, yep. All right, so a little miscommunication there. So it looks like we're going to be uh, continuing to move ahead. Yeah, it looks like everything's It looks like maybe there. he was considering whether or not Gemstone Mine's a trigger. Yeah, that, that's what it felt like. But it says when it comes into play, yeah. it comes with the counter. So, so there's no there's no triggering of putting the counters on there. So you're going to see another Dark Ritual. Adam's got his dies for, for his mana and everything. Storm Count's going to go to five. Lotus Petal's going to sacrifice so here. So he's six mana. Um, now, oh, wow. So 
Now he's going to go up to 9 mana, I believe, because he does have Threshold. Yep. So now he can actually cast Infernal Tutor. He has no cards in his hand, so he can just search for anything he wants, yep. basically. So Cabal Ritual with Hellbent, the mechanic, back then for Rakdos, no cards in your hand. With, with, uh, with Infernal Tutor, you just get Demonic Tutor, search for any card in your deck. Which is what he's going to do here is he does crack Lion's Eye Diamond in response. Make sure you can add that mana there, not to discard his hand. We'll see if he's going to search for Ad Nauseam or if he's going to search for Tender. He's going to search for Pass in Flames and go for the kill this yeah. way. So he floated red mana off of that. Pass in Flames, a card that will bring him for you guys as well. This is the over-costed but more flexible Yagamas Will. He's going to play a bunch of spells from his graveyard and then to kill him. And Adam shows him a Tendrils of Agony and Caleb scoops it up as he knows he is a huge underdog in game. Yeah, and you know, again, he knows he's familiar with Adam Prozac. He knows how well he plays this deck. Knows that there's unlikely to be any mistakes. So, how do you think it feels when you when you play a Tormund Taxi and probe, and you see your opponent is playing Elves and you're playing Storm? It's the best feeling. Yeah, it's literally just the best <laughs> feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah, he just has like all forest guys cradles. Yeah. And you're just going, oh baby, all right, at my leisure then. Yeah. The only better feeling would be if you cast like a taxing probe and your opponent revealed a hand of seven Elish Nords. Yeah. That's probably the only, better, it's the only time you'd ever feel any better. For multiple reasons. Yeah. As we're going to take a look at Caleb's sideboard here, um, I mean, he's got a lot of different one ofs and stuff like that. You can sideboard into a lot of different cards because of he has Natural Order, because he has Green Sun Zenith. Some of the cards are relevant, some of them aren't. The cards that are relevant in his sideboard, however, three copies of Cabal Therapy, two copies of Mindbreak Trap, and there are situations where the copies of Abrupt Decay could be useful. He also has one Scavenger use in his deck as well. Scavenging use, he can interact with Adam's Graveyard if he's on the Pass and Flames kill, mess with Threshold for Cabal Rituals. Um, I'm not sure if Adam has Rite of Flame in his deck, but he can mess with those. It doesn't look no, like he does. No he's right never right. really been partial to the to the red mana, yeah. uh, those red mana rituals. So those are the cards that he does have. He also has two copies of Surgical Extraction as well, which should come in. And Caleb has plenty of cards to sideboard out there, plenty of elves that are just too slow or bad in this matchup, and he has to focus his deck to have these disruption cards and then be able to combo Adam quickly. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just pretty easy to look at it there. And, and Adam's deck, you know, Ant is similar a deck similar to Dredge where you don't really want to dilute the power. You're, you're so powerful game one, you don't really want to dilute it after board with a, a lot of cards. So um, he does have certain cards for, like, a, he has four copies of Abrupt Decay, which you need against Counterbalance, basically. Absolutely. He has one Caracas, which can come in against Show and Tell, one Massacre, which generally comes in against Maverick. Uh, three copies of Carpet of Flowers, which generally come in against, you know, blue based decks mm -hmm. with a lot of permission spells. Uh, two Chain of Vapors, kind of catch-all spells which deal with permanents like Ley Line of Sanctity. Um, two Ignorant Bliss, one Tropical Island to, to help with the Carpet of Flowers. Uh, he also has one Cabal Therapy. Again, um, none of these cards that great against Elves, or he doesn't really need them. You know, yeah. his matchup's so good against Elves. And generally, the cards that he would expect elves to bring in are cards like Mind Break Trap, uh, maybe Cabal Therapy if they're splashing black. But again, um, you, you're not really going to be bringing in cards to counteract elves' sideboard plan. Maybe one Cabal Therapy. Yep. But I mean, uh, maybe that's about yeah, it. Yeah. But right? even but even then, Adam has four copies of Duress, so I really don't think he and he has two copies of Cabal Therapy in his main to go along with you know with our very good with the Taxi Pro. So. I don't, I don't see Adam doing that much after board in this matchup. I think he's pretty much saying, my, my deck's so good against you game one. Um, your game plan is going to be try to bring in cards like Mind Break Trap to try to, uh, and Surgical Extraction to try to stop me. And I have six discard spells in my main deck, along with Gitaxing Pro, when you just tell me, is, my, is the path clear, yes or no? Yeah. You know? yeah, Do you have one of your cyber cards? Nope, because if you don't have your cyber cards, you have no chance of stopping me. Absolutely. And you know, he's got a lot of ways, as you said, to check to make sure the path is clear between Pro, Duress, and Cabal Therapy. He seems a little, just to check really quickly, mm -hmm. and then if the coast is clear, all systems go, as we saw last game. Yeah, it's one of those decks where, and we talked about this before the tournament started, where um, if you're really comfortable with it, like Adam obviously is, and you play it a lot, uh, it's you know it's very powerful. Yeah, it's very very powerful. And again, there are if if you want to beat Ant, you can beat Ant. Absolutely. You know, there are ways you can really go after. Plenty of cards. That's why it sort of fluctuates. Some weekends it's great. Some weekends it's not so good. Um, I think people. Generally, though, they kind of ignore Ant's success, thinking that, okay, one, even though it does well, people, a lot of people still aren't going to play it just because it's so hard to play. Yeah, of course. So I generally, I don't think you're ever going to see people have too many hate cards against Ant because, one, the format's incredibly diver diverse. You can't devote too many cyborg slots to it. And two, you're just not going to expect to play it very, maybe once, maybe twice throughout, throughout a tournament. I think twice at the most, yeah, honestly. So, and I think that would even be like kind of a, Kind of a weird situation, like an abnormality. 
where you actually play against two Antex in like the same tournament, like especially eight rounds of Legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, like coming into this tournament, I know that I would not expect to play against Ant, even though it did win back-to-back -back opens, as you said. This is a deck that not, not, a, not a lot of people play. It's not a deck that someone's gonna, you know, when they're deciding what they want to play Legacy, they're gonna, you know, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play Ant. That's yeah. easy. I right, figure that out real quick, and uh, we'll call it a weekend. You just can't. It's not a deck you can pick up. Yeah. The night before, you yeah. just can't. You need to practice with it. You need to not, not only do you need to practice with it, you need to practice against certain matchups. You just can't goldfish with it. It feels like one of those decks that you can just goldfish with. But the thing is, you have to know. Okay, well, what if my opponent has like a mind break trap plan after board? What if my opponent tries to bring in lane line of sanctity? Like you have to figure out what you're gonna do after board against certain, all these different strategies that people employ against you. And uh, that's the thing, even though it is a goldfish deck, there's a lot of things you have to figure out what you're going to do after the board. Like, what is my plan going to be? Yeah, not, I mean, not even that. I mean, there's also just be, becoming familiar with, with having to play around a card as, as simple as Daze or Spell Pierce yeah. or Force of Will, because that's something you need to know how to do as well. And of course, there are Cabal Therapies in this deck, so you need to know how to what, what to name, what's yeah. important, when to actually cast those cards. It's not a very easy thing to do. Adam has basically trained himself in learning how to do it. You know, he wanted to, he's someone that we saw play a lot of counterbalance, you know, over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. Loves a brainstorm, loves a sense of mind top, loves a counterbalance. Didn't love how it was positioned once a Breath Decay got released. Figured that card would make its way into the format, have a huge effect, as it has, mm -hmm. kind of pushing counterbalance out. And so he decided, I want to learn and learn to play an unfair deck. Yeah. You know, when I talk with Adam, one of the things he always, you know, kind of gives me crap for is that I like to play super fair decks in Legacy. I love goblins. Uh, you know, I like to try to play an unfair deck that folds the forcible in Belcher. I just like to do those things. Yeah. He's like, why don't you just learn how to play Storm? I'm just like, I'm too dumb to learn how to play yeah. Storm. It's too hard. <laughs> I don't have the hours to put in to do that. And Adam just Adam has taken the time to do that, and now you see it tra translate in, into a lot of success. Yeah, and I really, I really like that plan too. Because if I was getting into Legacy. I like. I, I would consider just saying, okay, this deck is probably the most broken combo deck. I'm just going to learn how to play it inside and out, and just keep playing it. Yes. Like just c c commit to playing it over and over and over again. You will eventually probably win a tournament because there will be frustrations along the yeah, way. Of you know, you're going to lose because you make your own mistakes, and that's certainly frustrating, without question. But you can't let that frustration get to you because once you get over that hurdle and you learn the ins and outs of this deck, it's going to translate into a lot of success. As you see, Caleb is going to take a mulligan to five here, looking for. Presumably, Cabal Therapy or Mind Break Trap. He has three therapies and two traps. So yeah, and this is this is uh, really unfortunate for Kaler because after board, his deck uh, is so much more vulnerable to mulliganing because of the fact that it's much more diluted. Like he's not nearly as powerful because he's bringing in sideboard cards. Yeah. Um, he's not capable. Of, uh, he's not as capable of getting those really insane turn two, turn three gloom straws. Um, yeah. Because again, again, he has cards like Surgical Extraction and, and Mind Break Trap to draw that kind of like um, dilute the deck a little bit. But uh, again, you know, his deck is still powerful. He's on the play, so he still has a chance. Yeah, I mean, certainly not impossible. No. Um, you know, the interesting thing about the Storm deck as well, you know, obviously you've run deep into some tournaments before. I know that, you know, I've, I've run deep into some tournaments before. I sit next to, you know, when you're at the top tables, you're kind of looking around, seeing what you might be playing against. You might be kind of identify that one deck or one person you're just like, oh, no. Yeah. No, I don't want any part of that. And so, you know, maybe Caleb is sitting at the top tables this weekend. He sees Prozac playing Storm, and he's just going, uh... I hope I, I hope I dodge this, you know, <laughs> over the course of the weekend. And then you see the pairings of the future match gets announced and you just heart sinks a little bit. Uh, all right. It's Step, yeah. stepped on the landmine. What can you do? And it's, it's funny. It's like Ant won the last two opens. Everyone knows about it. It's a deck that's been around for a while. But you still have people saying, oh, yeah, I can't beat Ant. Yep. It's a tough matchup for me. You know, it's just it's, it's the way it is. As Caleb is going to keep his five, he's going to sacrifice Burden Catacombs, play Green Sun Zenith for zero. So here's going to come a Dryad Arbor, and we're going to see what land he's going to get with that catacombs. Probably a bayou, but yeah. we'll see if he wants to get a forest. And it safe. is going to be the non-basic. Yeah. You're, you're probably safe from uh, Wasteland and Blood Moon in, in this matchup, so might as well just go for the duel. Green Sun Zenith, a card that is currently banned in Modern. They've deemed it too powerful, mm -hmm. I think, maybe just because of the interaction, being able to search for Dryad Arbor, and then being able to draw another one and be able to search for some other green cards in your deck, being, play some Silver Bullets and stuff like that. Super powerful card. Yeah, very powerful. We saw it be very good in the Maverick decks last year. Cheap uh, year tutor effects. That. Cheap tutor effects are just too good. Too dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous. Especially this one puts it right into play. Yeah. Uh, just a little update on our other feature match. Michael Hetrick and Reed Duke, two Moto superstars battling it out, and Michael Hetrick is up one game. Mm -hmm. So now we see a Duress, Caleb faces up that hand, you see a Misty Rainforest, you see a Wirewood Symbiote, and you see a Virtual Ranger, so Duress is going to miss. Adam is basically just trying to fade a draw stuff here, as you know, if, 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 the, if the cards line up right, he can just go for it. Next yeah. turn, you see a giant grid on his face. Taking, duressing there and seeing where the coast is clear, yet again, I mean, when he probed game one, you see you're playing against elves. Game two, you see the coast is clear off that Duress. 
uh, all systems go. Yeah, if one you of the can. one of the few times you're actually okay with missing with the duress. You yeah. Know? So now we're gonna see Caleb play Misty Rainforest. He's gonna sacrifice. Might as well tap with that dryad armor. <laughs> Depends on what, how he wants to lay out his turn. It looks like he wants to go uh, with Elvish Oh wow, okay. okay. So he's going to start with Elvish Visionary. He thought about maybe sacrificing a land as he draws another Misty yeah. Rainforest. Looks like maybe he wanted to consider thinning his deck before drawing a card. Yeah. Increase the likelihood that he does draw a uh, Mind Break Trap or something like that. So, so uh, first of all, Ranger's going to allow him to empty his hand basically this turn. Which yeah. again, is good news for Adam because he know he doesn't have to worry about it, anything. Yeah. And so we'll see how Adam car Adam's cards do line up here. You, you do see, I think, a Gitaxian Pro over there, some other cards. You're going to see Caleb search out of Bayou. Play the Virtual Rangers. You said be able to empty his hand. Put Wirewood Symbiote into play as Virtual Rangers. Tap two elves. Add a color of mana. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like he's going to untap. Look at that. Big turn. <laughs> Big turn. Very tricky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Untaps the dry Harbor to replay the Virtual Rangers. Caleb showing him who's the boss. As we we're going to see a taxi in from right, Adam with Phyrexian mana. You'd imagine Adam like probably going for it this turn. He does draw an abrupt decay. We'll see what he's got over there. I think we see another probe. It doesn't look like all systems are go yet here for Adam. Oh, wow, yeah. He doesn't have any combo. I'm surprised he would have just cast the... Or maybe he just wants to draw. And he's going to play a cantrip. Yeah. Probe. yeah, just to cycle. You're going to see him hit a brainstorm. You see multiple lotus petals over there as well. So he is just getting things set up. He's so, going to play yeah. a lotus petal. I would imagine he's... Oh, okay. He wants an abrupt decay. Sure. In, in case there's... Uh, yeah, just in case anything combo. happens, yeah. yeah. He knows there's only a land in Caleb's hand. Let me just play a little safe here. Now Caleb does draw a land or elf, so not able to find a Cabal Therapy or a Mind Break Trap yet. And now we're going to see an Abrupt Decay there on the wire with Symbiote. Looks like it's going to be in the draw step. Yeah, and again, I don't think he, he, he doesn't want Caleb to be able to keep drawing cards with um, Elvish Visionary. Yeah. Give him a couple more draw steps. Yeah, well, part of the reason that Elves started... get one out of it. Part of the reason that Elves started to surface around Grand Prix Denver, we saw Matt Nass and Luis Scott Vargas have a pretty good weekend with that deck, is because its ability to be able to beat Jund and, and uh, Bug in the Abrupt Decay decks, um, just their ability to just start that loop with Wirewood Symbiote and Elvish, and Elvish Visionary, a lot of combo decks can't beat him at This one can because it can recoup those cards through that combo yeah. and just play a much more drawn-out game. And so that's part of the reason that you saw Elves become a combo deck that people went to. As you said earlier, it's not as fast as a Storm or as a Belcher, but it is more resilient. Yes. Um, can, multiple ways to attack you uh, can generate just a bunch of threats on the board really quickly. Um, Glimpse of Nature, a great card-drawing engine. Yep. It ha it's, it's this interesting deck because it has an oops I win draw on turn two yeah. that it's capable of, but at the same time it can certainly win on turn three, turn four. It can also just play this normal game of attacking you, which is why you find cards like Crater Hoof Behemoth in the deck list. You find cards like Natural Order in the deck list. There's a Progenitus in Caleb's sideboard. As you said, it has a lot of different angles of attack, a lot of different things it can do. Yeah, it's just not a fair deck. Yeah. And in a format where you have a bunch of fair decks running around like Jun and Stoneblade, um, the unfair decks like elves are going to show up and just take advantage. As we do see a brainstorm here from Adam, you see a couple dark rituals in his hand, you see him doing doing the math right now, you see an infernal tuner in his hand, I think there's a lion's eye diamond as well, so he needs to just figure out what he wants to put back, how much mana he can generate, and if he can go for it right now, and you see him, the gears are turning yeah. right now. I think he definitely wants to go for it, he wants to get the, because um, it looks like he, he has enough mana now if he wants to, although it's, if he's considering keeping the duress, he might be still. He's still concerned that maybe Caleb drew a mind break trap. Yeah, I mean, right now Adam's not under anything pressure, so he can play it a little bit slow. I mean, he's yeah. at 15. You know, he can make sure as you're going to see a dark ritual here that nothing bad happens, basically. Yeah. If you have enough mana, why not just go use the rest? Yeah, and now you're going to see a duress from Adam. He just wants to make sure that nothing horrible goes wrong. Caleb shows him a misty rainforest. Duress resolves. Now you're going to see Adam play a lion's eye diamond. He has plenty of cards in his graveyard for the for the Threshold and Cabal Ritual, so that's going to add him five mana. You're going to see that die tick up. So, yep, pretty much the same sequence we saw last mm -hmm. turn. Search and for, and uh, uh, likely going for Pass in Flames again, and just recast everything. You see the Infernal Tutor, he, he breaks the Lion's Eye Diamond with that on the stack. Yet again, he's going to add some mana. You see the two dies representing the mana that he does have floating. Black for one, probably red for the other one, but we'll find out for sure in just a moment here. As he already bypassed that nauseum, so he's going to search for Pass in Flames. He's going to do this. Looks like he has two black mana floating. You see the Storm Count rising. And of course, he does have all those rituals, those Kataxian probes in his graveyard as well. Caleb's going to make him finish him off, as yeah, he should. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. 
But Adam said, don't worry, this won't take too long. Not my first time doing this. A lot this of is my first rodeo. Yeah, a lot of people on Magic Online make me go through it, buddy, so I, so I don't mind. Okay, he was just shaking his hand, head right here. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to see Inferno Tutor again, Hellbent, no cards in his hand. Didn't cantrip those Cataxian probes, plenty of mana. Adam sequencing everything correctly, dies are going to yeah. hold steady. And we're going to see him search for Tendrils of Agony, a handshake, yep. and a winner. Adam Prozac wins 2-0, playing Ad Nauseam Tendrils, defeats Caleb Durward, playing Combo Elves to move on to 8-2. and two. Why wouldn't you play Anthem? <laughs> 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 what a fantastic deck. Yeah. I mean, it is certainly powerful when the person playing it knows how to. That is one. That, it's just one of the scariest things. When And it's kind of funny in Magic, too, because, you know, if you follow this circuit or you follow Legacy a little bit, you kind of know the people who identify with Ant. You know, Ari Lax has played a lot, a lot of Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam Prozac plays Ad Nauseam Tendrils now, and it's just like when you're playing Legacy, you're just like, ugh, you know, if, we're gonna, if I'm playing a Storm, how about just not these guys? You know, yeah. I, if, 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 like, a random person, I sit down and play a Storm, I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah. But, like, if I'm, like, if my Storm matchup was, like, close or something, and it's like, yeah, pro, I'm playing against Prozac playing Storm, it's just, like, heart sinks. Rather not play against you playing Storm, because, like, you know how to operate your deck, and, you know, you don't have to think about these, like, difficult decisions. Maybe you goof with like the mana or something, the cards you keep with the brainstorm or ponder, it's just not gonna happen over there. Yeah, and and you the other thing is you really don't wanna have to play against yeah, you really just don't wanna have to play against Ant. Yeah. You know, in general. Whether or not they're good or bad, you don't wanna have to play against it.